Aya is hearing the little ants chittering to each other as they scuttle around in the soil. You mean you can hear ants talking? Every single word, the BFG said, although Aya is not exactly understanding their language. Go on, Sophie said. Sometimes on a very clear night, the BFG said, and if I was is swiggling my ears in the right direction, and Harry swiveled his great ears upwards and inwards as they were facing the ceiling, if I is swiggling like this and that, and the night is very clear, I is sometimes hearing faraway music coming from the stars in the sky. A little queer shiver passed through Sophie's body. She sat very quiet, waiting for more. My ears is what told me you was watching me out of the window last night, the BFG said. But I didn't make a sound, Sophie said. I was hearing your heart beating across the road, the BFG said, loud as a drum. Go on, Sophie said, please. I can hear plants and trees. Do they talk, Sophie said. They is not exactly talking, the BFG said, but they is making noises. For instance, if I come along and I is picking a lovely flower, and I is twisting the stem of the flower till it breaks, then the plant is screaming. I can hear it screaming and screaming very clear. You don't mean it, said Co Sophie cried. How awful. It is screaming just like you would be screaming if someone was twisting your arm right off. Is that really true? Sophie asked. You think I is swizzfuggling you? It is rather hard to believe. Then I is stopping right here, said the BFG sharply. I is not wishing to be called a fibster. Oh no, I am not calling you anything, Sophie cried. I believe you, I really do. Please go on. The BFG gave her a long, hard stare. Sophie looked right back at him. Her face opened to his. I believe you, she said softly. She had offended him. She could see that. I wouldn't ever be fibbling to you, he said. I know you wouldn't, said Sophie, but you must understand that this isn't easy to believe such an amazing thing straight away. I understand that, the BFG said. So please forgive me and go on, she said. He waited a while longer, and then he said, It is the same with trees as it is with flowers. If I is chopping an axe into the trunk of a big tree, I is hearing a terrible sound coming from inside the heart of the tree. What sort of sound? Sophie asked. A soft moaning sound, the BFG said. It is like the sound of an old man making when he is dying slowly. He paused. The cave was very silent. Trees is living and growing just like you and me, he said. They is alive, so is plants. He was sitting very straight in his chair now, his hands clasped tightly together in front of him. His face was bright, and his eyes were uh, round and bright as two stars. Such wonderful and terrible sounds I is hearing, he said. Some of them you would never wish to be hearing yourself, but some is like glorious music. He seemed almost to be transfigured by the excitement of his thoughts. His face was... Beautiful in its blaze of emotions. Just tell me some more about them, Sophie said quietly. You just ought to be hearing the little mices talking, he said. Little mices is always talking to each other, and I is hearing them as loud as my own voice. What do they say, Sophie asked. Only the mices know that, he said. Spiders is also talking a great deal. You might not be thinking it, but spiders is the most tremendous netterboxes. And when they is spinning their webs, they is singing all the time. They is singing sweeter than a nightingale. What else do you hear? Sophie asked. One of the biggest chatterboxes is the caterpillars, the BFG said. What do they say? They is arguing all the time about who is going to be the prettiest butterfly. That is all they ever is talking about. Is there a dream floating around here now? Sophie asked. The BFG moved his great ears this way and that. Listening intently, he shook his head. There is no dream in here, he said, except in the bottles. I had a special place to go for catching dreams. They is not often coming to giant country. How do you catch them? The same way you is catching butterflies, the BFG answered, with a net. He stood up and crossed over the, to a corner of the cave where a pole was leaning against the wall. The pole was about 30 feet long, and there was a net at the end, in the end of it. Here is the dream catcher, he said grasping the pole in one hand. Every morning I is going out and snitching new dreams and put in my bottles. Suddenly he seemed to lose interest in the conversation. I is getting hungry, he said. It's time for eats.